Okay, hello everyone. This is Victor Momo from Excel Moments. In this video, I want to show you um, an approach to extracting a unique list from multiple columns of data. I've done this in the first video using the unique sequence and index functions, but here I want to do it with filter XML. But just to recap what the data set looks like, this is just in my mind a fictitious WhatsApp group where these are my top 10 posters for the quarters. Okay, so as you can see, they are duplicate names. I mean, because the same people who may be in top 10 in Q1 may be in Q3 and Q4. But what you want to extract is from these 40 names, you want to extract a unique list here you know so there are 40 names but yes how many people do i actually have in the top 10 so there are just 14 of them so how do we do this with filter xml let's first of all just look quickly at you know what a typical xml code would look like okay so if you look at this code here you will see that typically you have you know well let's leave the prologue you would have you know a parent node and then you could have or a root node then you have you know another node the node could have different elements. So here, this node is the book node, right? And the book has a title, which is an element, uh, has an author, has a year, has a price. The important thing to note here is that when you have the opening tags for book here, you see it's open book, you would have a closing tag here. The closing tag always has a forward slash. So you see that this book, which starts here, you know, that node closes here. The same thing, there's one that starts here, there's one that closes here. Now, the bookstore, which is opened here, would obviously have to close at the very end. Okay, so you would see a forward slash and a bookstore. That's the important thing to just know that that's the sequence you are expecting. Okay, so let me show you an example here. So you see what I said exactly. If you start with like the parent node of A and you have the next node as B, it must close with a forward slash B forward slash A. So A's are the boundaries, okay? So it starts with A, it ends with A. The next is B, it must end with a B also. So what you realize is that you can use the filter XML to extract these individual elements. This is not a video on XML, you know, where we talk about expert and, you know, element attributes and nodes and all that. But just note simply that you can use the filter XML just like this, just using the filter XML and putting this as your XML tag and saying you want to extract at the level of B. You say you want to extract at the level of B, it's going to give you all these elements, James, John, and Jane. And with the dynamic arrays, it makes it easier. It just spills and you have what you want. So what we are going to do is we are just going to try and create from these 14 names, we are going to create a tag that looks like this. So that when we use the filter XML on it, we can then extract the individual elements. Don't forget our objective is more or less to append these four into one. Right, we want these four columns to come into one. I know somebody could say copy paste on that, copy paste on that, you know, by copy and paste, copy and paste. But just always think if you had 20 columns, if you had 30 columns, would you really want to do that? You need to find a smart way to do this. So here I'm going to now start off with what we we want to do for this one here. So I'm going to start with the opening tag. The opening tag in this case. It's going to be A and B. You can use any alphabet. Just make sure you are consistent in your root node, the next node, and, you know, your opening and closing tags. That's the important thing. So it starts with this. The next thing is that between each of the elements, you know, you would want to have, as in that glue, the glue is always like a closing tag and then an opening tag for the next one. So we'll use a text join, you know, and our delimiter would be, you know, um, a closing tag and an opening tag, which is kind of what glues all of them together. Now, it doesn't matter whether we have empty cells or not. That's not important here. So well, we could, you know, just keep the argument. Then we, we, we select rather, you know, the entire range. So what this is going to be is that it's going to start with Rick, then it's going to concatenate using this as the delimiter. You know, if forward slash B and B, it will have Ken pools, it will have Rick, it will have Ken, and that's how it's going to go one after the other. But let's close this one first. Now, this concludes the text join. The next thing is you need to have the closing tags, okay? So how is it going to close? Because you have A and B starting, it must close with B and A, okay? So you have a forward slash B, and then you have a forward slash A, okay? You close all that, and then you have this. Well, we could decide to maybe just expand a lead to and then maybe wrap text just to see. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's not so nice, but okay, let me let me control Z. All right, I was thinking that would be, I need to expand a little more, but that's okay. Let me just uh, show you what's happening here. So you can see that we have A, B, then you see Rick, you can see a closing tag, then you have an opening tag, it goes to Ken Pulse. When it's done, it goes back to Rick, 
goes to Ken. Then after Ken, I'm just going to follow it up to just yeah, David. Okay, so you can see that once it's done with Ken, it comes to you know David, and that's how it's going to go on till it gets to you know Mender Tracy. That will be the end. So this is you know as in a properly formed XML tag now, which we can now feed into the filter XML. You know, so the filter XML takes this as the XML. Then for the X part, which is just saying at what node do you want me to extract? So I'm just saying I want you to extract at the B level. Okay, so at the B level, it's going to be all the names you have in there. All right, and then press enter. Okay, and you can see that you have all the names now in one column. So once you have that, you can easily just put a unique function here. All right, and then you know you have a unique list of um, you know top ten posters, and that's the same thing you have here. Well, you can go one extra level if you want to sort it. For example, you could just say, oh, I want to sort this, and you have this sorted. So just to show you that, well, aside using like, you know, the index function and the sequence like I did in the other video, you could have used filter XML. It's really, really interesting, you know, when you come to think about it. some of those things that, you know, you're like, oh, how exactly does this work? You watch it a few times. You do a little study on filter XML and it kind of, you know, makes sense. And you can now find more opportunities where you can you know, apply this. So I hope you love this video. Please hit the like button. Also subscribe to the channel, Excel Moments. And uh, for now, I would say I'm out.